Today, we're talking about something huge in the world of computer science, a real breakthrough. For more than 60 years, one of the most basic problems in computing had a speed limit that pretty much everyone thought was unbreakable. Well, that wall just came tumbling down. Okay, before we get deep into the theory, let's start with something you probably do every day. You pull out your phone, you ask for the fastest way to get somewhere, and poof, there it is. That little bit of everyday magic, you're looking at the exact problem we're going to unravel today. So what we're talking about here has a name. It's called the Single Source Shortest Path Problem, or SSSP for short. You can think of this as the holy grail for anyone working on how networks operate. And solving it isn't just for bragging rights. It's the engine that runs everything from your GPS to how data packets find their way across the internet. But here's the really cool part about the SSSP problem. We're not just looking for a single route from point A to point B. No, the goal is way more ambitious. It's to find the shortest path from your one starting point to every other possible destination in the network, all at the same time. It's like calculating the fastest way from your house to literally every single address in your city all at once. For this massive job, computer scientists have had a go-to tool for a very long time, an amazing algorithm from way back in 1959. But it had a catch. It was so good at what it did that it basically created its own speed limit, a theoretical wall that everyone started calling Dijkster's Barrier. And for more than 60 years, this barrier was like a vault that nobody could crack. Now, to really get this breakthrough, you have to know about the two classic contenders in this field. In one corner, you've got Dijkstra's algorithm. It's fast, it's precise, it's the champ. But its entire strategy depends on sorting points by how far away they are. And in the other corner, you have the Bellman-Ford algorithm. It's generally slower, but, and this is everything, it doesn't need to sort. That one little difference is the key to this whole story. See, because Dijkstra's algorithm is constantly asking itself, okay, what's the absolute closest place I haven't been to yet? It's, at its core, a sorting problem. It has to keep all its options in a perfectly neat, ordered line. And that created this theoretical wall, the sorting barrier. For decades, everyone just assumed you couldn't find the shortest path without first solving the sorting problem. And this, right here, was the very lock on the vault. A 2024 paper basically proved it. Look, if you absolutely must have a list of all the destinations perfectly sorted by distance, then yeah, you can't do better than Dijkstra. But the researchers behind this new discovery saw a tiny bit of wiggle room in that statement. They asked, what if you don't need the nicely sorted list? What if all you need are the final distances themselves? That one question changed everything. After generations of brilliant people running headfirst into that same wall, one team found a way to use that loophole. They created a whole new blueprint, a way to get the prize, the shortest path distances, without ever having to pick the lock of sorting. The moment that finally broke this 60-year-old deadlock came with a paper from a team of researchers, Rand Duan, J.I. Mao, Xiao Mao, Xin Kai Shu, and Long Hui In. They introduced what's called a deterministic algorithm that, for the first time, smashed right through the sorting barrier for complex networks. This is the time complexity of their new algorithm. And I know, I know, it looks like alphabet soup. But let's unpack it, because all the magic is hiding right here. Put simply, M is the number of connections in the network, and N is the number of points. So, what makes this faster? Well, the secret sauce is that little number on the logarithm. In Dijkstra's, the speed is tied to log n, which you can think of as log to the power of 1. As you can see on the slide, the new algorithm has log to the power of 2 thirds. And since 2 thirds is less than 1, it means as the network gets bigger and more complexity, the new algorithm's runtime just grows more slowly. It is fundamentally provably faster. So how on earth did they do it? How did they crack a problem that had the entire field stumped for half a century? Well, the answer is just so clever. They didn't choose one of the old methods over the other. Nope. They took those two old rivals, Dijkstra and Bellman Ford, and brilliantly merged them into something brand new. Okay, think of it this way. Dijkstra's algorithm is like trying to organize a giant stadium full of people by lining them all up in perfect order of height. It's accurate for sure, but you're gonna spend a ton of time just shuffling people around to keep that perfect line. The new algorithm is totally different. Instead of trying to line everyone up, it just quickly points to a few leaders in the crowd. And then those leaders organize their own little groups around them. 
It's a classic divide-and-conquer move that completely avoids the bottleneck of making one giant, perfectly sorted line. So here's the game plan in action. The algorithm starts with what's called a frontier. That's all of its possible next moves. Now, instead of slowly sorting that whole list like Dykstra would, it uses a few quick moves inspired by Bellman Ford to pick out a handful of strategic pivots. These pivots then go and solve the paths for huge chunks of the network all at once. And just like that, the frontier shrinks dramatically, all without ever doing a full sort. These pivots, they're the secret weapon. They are those leaders in the crowd. By finding these super efficient points, the algorithm can work so much smarter. It just keeps breaking the problem down into smaller and smaller pieces, letting the pivots do all the hard work for their own little neighborhoods. This totally dodges the big, slow sorting comparison that held Dykstra back for 60 years. And just like that, the barrier is broken. Now, this isn't just some tiny tweak for a little more speed. This is a fundamental shift in how we even think about this core problem. So what does this actually mean for the future? You know, a discovery like this never just appears out of thin air. It's a huge moment, sure, but it's built on decades of work. The story starts with Dijkstra setting the bar way back in 59. We saw optimizations in the 80s, and then a really hopeful moment in the 90s when this same barrier was broken for a related problem. This 2025 paper, it's the final chapter in that long, long scientific journey. So what's the bottom line? Well, first, this is the first deterministic algorithm, meaning it's guaranteed to work, no randomness, to beat Dijkstra on these kinds of networks. Second, it flips a 60-year-old assumption on its head. It proves, once and for all, that you don't have to sort to find the shortest path. And by proving that old rule wrong, it opens the door for designing all sorts of new, even faster algorithms we haven't even thought of yet. And this is the thought I really want to leave you with. A breakthrough like this isn't just an answer to an old problem. It's a brand new, much bigger question. It shows that even the most established rules of science are really just temporary. It makes you wonder, what other unbreakable barriers are just sitting there, waiting for the right idea to come along and prove they were never really there at all?